Well, good morning and welcome to today's online reflection for remembrance. Today we're able to have a short remembrance service in church at 10 a.m., followed by a parade from Steeple Square to the War Memorial for an act of remembrance that will include the silence and wreath laying. Whether in church, at the War Memorial, or here online in our homes, the important thing is that we remember. Our call to worship. On this day of memory, we gather to worship and to pray. We remember the past and we look to the future. On this day, we come before you, God, seeking your peace. On this day of hope, in the face of terror, we come before you, God, praying with all our hearts. For you are the God, our help in ages past and our hope for years to come. Open our eyes and the eyes of the nations to find a different path through the disagreements of life in this world. In this time, may we be recommitted to being people of peace, true peace. And so may we catch a vision of how we can live together in unity. And so we echo the old prayers, make us channels of your peace. And let there be peace on earth, and may it begin with us. So let us worship. Today, George and Myra will share with us the well-known hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, and this will be followed by Elizabeth, reading from Psalm 90.
Today's reading is taken from the book of Psalms and reading Psalm 90. O Lord, you have always been our home. Before you created the hills or brought the world into being, you were eternally God and will be God forever. You tell us to return to what we were. You change us back to dust. A thousand years to you are like one day. They are like yesterday already gone, like a short hour in the night. You carry us away like a flood. We last no longer than a dream. We are like weeds that sprout in the morning, that grow and burst into bloom, then dry up and die in the evening. We are destroyed by your anger. We are terrified by your fury. You place our sins before you, our secret sins, where you can see them. Our life is cut short by your anger. It fades away like a whisper. Seventy years is all we have. Eighty years if we are strong. Yet all they bring us is trouble and sorrow. Life is soon over and we are gone. Who has felt the full power of your anger? Who knows what fear your fury can bring? Teach us how short our life is so that we may become wise. How much longer will your anger last? Have pity, O Lord, on your servants. Fill us each morning with your constant love, so that we may sing and be glad all our life. Give us now as much happiness as the sadness you gave us during all our years of misery. Let us, your servants, see your mighty deeds. Let our descendants see your glorious might. Lord our God, may your blessings be with us. Give us success in all we do. Amen. And may God bless to us this reading of his holy word. Thank you. Thank you, George and Myra. And thank you to Elizabeth. Remembrance Day is a day of opposites, a day of contradictions, a day to remember the horror of war and the fragility of peace. War is horrific. War is terrible. War is sometimes a result of a failure or a complete breakdown in communication and diplomacy. And yet war can also bring out the best in people. It can unite people in standing up for what is right, what is just, what is true. War can work to free the oppressed or work towards peace. This Remembrance Day, when we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the British Legion and the Poppy Appeal, we remember those who served in two world wars and in many conflicts since. Today, some young men and women from our country serve their country in the Army, the Navy and the Air Force. And some are involved in peacekeeping duties and others may be involved in conflict or conflict resolution. And some are injured and some lose their life and pay the ultimate sacrifice. I will never forget a wedding I conducted a number of years ago now. The bride was the daughter of my then organist in Clark Memorial Church Largs. A few weeks before the wedding, the soon-to-be bride was in church, and after the service we were chatting about just how excited she was that her fiancé was coming home. He was a soldier serving then in Afghanistan. And in a few days, he'd be home on leave for the wedding that was three weeks later. The next day, I received a call from a friend of the family saying the groom-to-be had been blown up. He wasn't dead, but he'd been seriously injured in an explosion involving an IED, an improvised explosive device, in Afghanistan, in Afghanistan which had killed two of his friends. After receiving treatment at Camp Bastion in Afghanistan, he was flown home to Selly Oak Medical Hospital in Birmingham. And after intense treatment and lots of uncertainty and pain and feelings of helplessness, he made enough of a recovery to be married three weeks after that awful event. I'm sure there was much still medical and nursing, much prayers and positive thoughts that helped the recovery. The wedding itself was a great day, lots of soldiers there, a real feeling of camaraderie and bonds of, of friendship and love. But it nearly didn't happen. And it really makes you think about the real cost 
of the way in which we try to resolve some of the world's most difficult problems. And we need to find other ways or we will never be done hearing stories of tragedy and trial. The season of remembrance is a time when we wear a poppy to remind ourselves that our freedom comes at a tremendous cost. And hopefully that same poppy stands as a symbol of our commitment to find other ways to resolve the conflicts that tears at the hearts of women and men, mothers and fathers, communities on all sides. Here's another contradiction. Who could imagine that the poppy, such a powerful symbol of remembrance for so many years, is also so much a part of the danger that our men and women serving with the armed forces have faced. Those servicemen and women who served in Helmand province in Afghanistan face an enemy whose economy depended on the poppy that supplies 75% at least of the world's illegal drugs. And so the real poppy flower grows in Afghanistan and from it comes a drug that can ruin a life and can also save a life. Those badly and traumatically injured in war like my friend's son-in-law, need the drug from the poppy to save their lives. And then usually a few months later, those who survive find themselves suffering the symptoms of withdrawal from a drug that would never otherwise have been part of their life. It's another contradiction or irony of modern warfare. But today we remember and we give thanks for the 100th anniversary of the British Legion and the poppy appeal, a tremendous milestone and achievement. So wear your poppy and wear it with pride. Remember those who've given their lives for the sake of others, the pursuit of peace and justice. Remember those we knew, parents and grandparents, sons and daughters. And remember those we didn't know, those who are simply names or even strangers to us. So wear your poppy and wear it with pride. Remember families on all sides of conflict and war who have lost and who lose loved ones and have had their lives broken by loss, literally torn apart with the news of the death of a son, a daughter, a spouse. So wear your poppy and wear it with pride and do all you can to be at peace, to live at peace, to make peace with your neighbour with others in community, in our nation, and in our world. Remembrance is about reflecting on the past, the suffering of many who gave their all for you and for me. We remember the courage and the bravery of young men and women who sacrificed their lives in order to win freedom and secure a peace. We remember young men and women who left this country, their homes with courage and bravery, not really knowing all the difficulties or challenges or problems or enemies they were to face, but they still set out bravely. For they believed in what they were doing. They believed they had to give of themselves for others. They believed in taking risks and using their abilities for others. Our world is far from perfect, but the freedom and the peace that has been won is priceless. And so remembrance is about committing ourselves to the pursuit of peace and justice. And to do this effectively, we have to learn from the past. It's active remembrance. We'll be judged if we do not learn from history and move forward, building on the sacrifice of so many who have gone before us. Our duty is to learn from history, to learn from the past and to move forward. For those of us who have little or no knowledge of the world wars, the two world wars, it's impossible to remember. We depend on history and on people sharing their stories. The Psalm 90 that Elizabeth read for us is about remembering. It's about remembering the faithfulness of God in good days and in terrible days. The twelfth verse of that Psalm states, Teach us to number our days or to remember our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. And a few verses earlier, in the ninth verse, we read, We spend our years as a tale that is told. That's the challenge to us all, to number our days, to remember our past, and to share our tales, our stories, 
our histories that we might learn and be wise and the poppy helps us to remember. I'm going to finish with um, a few lines of poetry I came across about the poppy that may help our thinking. It's entitled, Please Wear a Poppy. Please wear a poppy, the lady said, and held one forth, but I shook my head. Then I stopped and watched as she offered them there, and her face was old and lined with care. But beneath the scars the years had made, there remained a smile that refused to fade. A boy came whistling down the street, bouncing along on carefree feet. His smile was full of joy and fun. Lady, said he, may I have one? When she's pinned it on, he turned to say, Why do we wear a poppy today? The lady smiled in her wistful way and answered, This is Remembrance Day, and the poppy there is a symbol for the gallant men who died in war. And because they did, you and I are free. That's why we wear a poppy, you see. I had a boy about your size with golden hair and big blue eyes. He loved to play and jump and shout, free as a bird. He would race about. As the years went by, he learned and grew and became a man, as you will too. He was fine and strong, with a boyish smile, but he'd seemed with us such a little while when war broke out and he went away. I still remember his face that day when he smiled at me and said, Goodbye, I'll be back soon, Mum, so please don't cry. But the war went on and he had to stay, and all I could do was wait and pray. His letters told of the awful fight. I can see it still in my dreams at night, with the tanks and the guns and the cruel barbed wire, and the mines and the bullets, the bombs and the fire. Till at last, at last the war was won. And that's why we wear a poppy, my son. The small boy turned as if to go, then said, Thanks, lady, I'm glad to know. That sure did sound like an awful fight. But your son, did he come back all right? A tear rolled down each faded cheek. She shook her head, but did not speak. I slunk away in a sort of shame, and if you were me, you'd have done the same. For our thanks in giving, if oft delayed, though our freedom was bought and thousands paid. And so when we see a poppy worn, let us reflect on the burden borne by those who gave their very all when asked to answer their country's call that we at home in peace might live. Then wear a poppy, remember and give. And so we come to this online act of remembrance and we remember before God and commend to God's eternal care all who have died for this country in two world wars and in various conflicts since, in the defence of their homeland and to win and secure peace. We pray for all who mourn their passing, remembering too those who have died in subsequent conflicts in Palestine, Borneo, Malaysia, the Falkland Islands, Northern Ireland, the Gulf, Iraq, Afghanistan and many other places where servicemen and women have given their lives in the cause of freedom and peace. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them.
When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. And now a prayer of thanksgiving for Remembrance Sunday. Let us pray. Where swords are turned to ploughshares and spears to pruning hooks, where the guns fall silent and the rumours of war cease, we see the love of God written on the hearts of men and women and offer our thanksgiving to God. Where man see, says, I am my brother's keeper and the guardian of his days, where mothers, sons and daughters grow old and lands free from strife, we see the love of God written on the hearts of men and women and offer our thanksgiving to God. Where enemies destroy the barriers that divide and no man's land becomes home to each and all, where colour, creed and nation unite, not stand apart, we see the love of God written on the hearts of men and women and offer our thanksgiving to God. Where silent remembering inspires songs of Freedom, justice and truth, and the sacrifice of old shapes the passion for the future. Where those who gave their lives and youth let us age in years and wisdom, we see the love of God written on the hearts of men and women and offer our thanksgiving to God. Where courage never fades in the battle for the right and power is given to the weak, the least, the last, where compassion finds a home to root out fear, mistrust or pride, we see the love of God written on the hearts of men and women and offer our thanksgiving to God. For the love of Father, Son and Spirit is the huge source of human love, the fire of God within us, shedding light upon our path. Write this love upon our hearts, O God, as we offer you our thanks through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour, who gave his life for us and taught us when we pray to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. And now thanks to all who took part in our online reflection, to George and Myra for the hymn, to Elizabeth for reading, and to Alan and Emma for putting it all together. Till next week, stay safe, and know that God is with you whatever the week ahead might bring.